What's up guys? So I'm in the E39 BMW M5, which as you know, was recently supercharged. I'm gonna take it to the dyno today to find out how much power it's actually making. Now, it's supposed to make 560 crank horsepower and 450 crank pound-feet of torque. So if you do 15% drivetrain loss, it's gonna post around 475 wheel horsepower, uh, 380 wheel pound-feet of torque. But I'm not sure whether it's actually going to produce the numbers that they claim. So there's only one way to find out. I'm gonna be honest, if the car makes 400 wheel horsepower or 350, I'm gonna post it up. Uh, I might cry, but we'll see. Maybe tuning will fix that. The car is feeling really good now that it's cooler out. These cars suffer uh, immensely from heat soak. It's like I give Z06s so much shit for that and then I put a supercharger on my M5 and, and then it has heat soak for days. But now that it is 79 degrees and not insanely humid, instead of when I just got the car when it was 95 and crazy humid, the car does feel like it pulls pretty fast. Let's see what kind of numbers it puts down. Mandatory wiggle to make sure it's in neutral. I don't know why I do this. I don't know why everyone does it. But if you drive a manual, you do it. This is a long shot, but if anyone has just the lower plastic piece here that they'd want to sell me, I uh, wouldn't mind it because I hate this glaring scratch that actually uh, came with the car when I bought it. I don't think I've ever driven without clicking both of these buttons. Mandatory in the 39 M5. Outside of boost control performance in Livonia, Michigan, they're hooking me up with a dyno run. Let's see what kind of numbers this thing puts down. Got the dyno jet looking up the wheelbase. All right, so we got Alex from BCP here. For people who don't know much about dynos, what do you have to do to set up a rear wheel drive car? I know you had to uh, expose the coil packs to get an yeah. RPM reading. Yeah. yeah, we just want to get the drive wheels over the rear roller because that's how we're going to measure power. The front wheels obviously don't have to spin so we can, we can strap those stationary. And then with uh, all dyno jets, we have to get a spark reading so we get an RPM pickup off of one of the coil packs. Um, and on these cars, we have to remove a little bit the covers and whatnot. Gotcha. Yeah. How do you know how many fans to use? The more the better? Uh, we <laughs> want as much airflow as we can get. Because gotcha. obviously going down the road at 100 miles an hour, we're not going to be able to replicate that. But we want to get as much airflow as possible. And then let the car cool off in between runs so that we can get maximum horsepower readings. Cool. And then how many runs do you normally do? For power pulls, generally one to three. We'll get the job done. Uh, a cool down in between will give us an idea of how much the car makes when it's hot and then cooled down and we'll get a good weighted average between two or three runs. Let's see what she does. Got the fans running, it's all hooked up. She's gonna do a slow pull, make sure everything's secured properly. So you took the twin turbo setup off and you put one turbo on it? Yeah, yeah. The stock cool. twins are limited to about 500 wheel horsepower depending on what fuel you're running. 
and um, with a motive single system, you're able to make 802, um, and you know you can run it at lower power if you want, 600, 700, 800, but it gives you that range. Um, we've got our BCP Colossal intercooler up front. Mm -hmm. uh, That's cool. Called Colossal for a very specific reason, but um, yeah, we pull the motor right out the bottom. That seems to work best when you have access to a hoist and a work table on the bed. Yep. Also gives you a chance to power wash the, the subframe. <laughs> uh, um, we're, we're pretty proud of what we've done with the especially with the mileage that it has on. Yeah. I'm gonna add a boost gauge to the blow off valve so we can see how much boost is running. We're gonna go for round two. Now we got a boost gauge hooked up. Yep. Holy shit. It's uh it's a little messy right now. Didn't have a chance to detail it, but it has an accelerated built 3.4 liter engine. Oh my god. It's got an 82 millimeter turbo. Um, made 1,204 wheel horsepower with a little bit of wheel spin on our dyno. So we estimate that to be slightly higher, but that's the number that we got out of it at 42 PSI. That's on E85 pump gas. Um, this car has an AEM Infinity 10 ECU. So it's got all the bells and whistles, boost by gear, traction control. Um, this, is, this is, you know, the epitome of a fully built Supra right here. Um, Sweet. Inside, one of, the, one of the coolest features of this car is we've got a, uh, a boost select switch inside. So if you just look right in there, he's got that knob right next to him. So when he's oh, driving that's at any time, he can wick the power up from about 850 all the way to 1200 wheel horsepower. <laughs> um, he's not going to be putting down 1200 with these wheels and tires, but yep. we've got some, some drag set up. In terms Poor of roof. Yeah, good came up, I guess. I wasn't around for it. <laughs> Damn. on this car I don't know how much he's trying to put out there but um, we're, we're gonna try and really push the stock engine to the limits cool and then we're gonna you know continue from there if something goes wrong <laughs> Isn't the stock transmission limited to like 650 pound feet of torque or something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, and what we're gonna do Lionzilla, to that's funny. that safety factor along with the engine is to keep the torque down. Yep. Uh, many, many people know that horsepower is a calculation of torque and RPM. So we're gonna try and keep the torque flatlined on this thing and see how much power we can make out towards red line so we don't bend any rods or, or hurt the transmission. Just a couple of LS cars over here. Both of them are blown. The bottom one is twin turbo, the top one is supercharged. Nice. Uh, it's it's no surprise to get seven, sometimes 800 wheel horsepower out of uh, an LS3 with some boost on it and good fuel. All in stock ECU too. That's crazy. And transmission? Oh yeah. Yeah, stock automatic and manual seem to hold up. The 6L80 can get a little upset depending on what you're doing with it at those power levels, but hey, it can't be perfect, right?
did four dyno polls, the best of which were the last two. Let's go ahead and check out the data. We got, now this is uh, wheel horsepower and torque, so 470 wheel horsepower, actually 472.8 was the highest, and then 402 pound-feet of torque. When I just got the car, uh, it was really, really hot and really humid. Uh, when I said just got the car, I mean just got the supercharger installed. And according to the forum, uh, this car does terrible in high heat and humidity. I mean, that's characteristic of supercharged cars. But now that it's cooler out, uh, obviously we've got some fans blowing. Put down some pretty decent numbers. I'm happy with it. If you do a uh, drivetrain conversion, it's, it's about where it should be, uh, what the manufacturer has claimed. Now we just have to uh, take it to the drag strip and see what you can run on the quarter mile. So there you have it. That's how fast my ESS supercharged BMW M5 is. 473 wheel horsepower was the highest and 402 pound feet of torque uh, was also the highest rating. Take whatever you want from that. I'm pretty pleased. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Special thanks to Boost Control Performance in Livonia, Michigan for making this happen, squeezing me in last minute. See you next video. No!